Mr. Garcia. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight has been uh, very interesting. I want to just take a moment just to put today in context. We're here right now at this late hour uh, to accommodate the majority's field trip to praise uh, their leader. And let's not forget that he left office in disgrace. Yes, uh, gentle lady from Georgia, we are going to talk about uh, that Donald Trump who stole classified materials and stored them in his bathroom. He was investigated and indicted for his crimes. Now, Attorney General Garland set up a parallel investigation of President Biden's handling of classified documents as well. And that shows the Department of Justice is actually fair and independent. So to oversee this investigation, he appointed Robert Hur, a former U.S. attorney handpicked by Donald Trump. Robert Hur found no wrongdoing by President Biden. No wrongdoing by President Biden. But he chose to smear President Biden with a totally unprofessional and wrong assessment of the president's age and mental sharpness. Now, as we know, his assessment about President Biden was wrong because you can literally yourself read the transcript, which is over 250 pages long. Now, many of us, especially us Democrats, know the president. He is sharp. He is focused on the big issues. He's dealing with large challenges across the world. Now, the majority is hyping up this issue to distract us from the fact that Donald Trump keeps embarrassing himself in public. And as much as a gentle lady from Georgia and others may not like it, we know that Trump's public statements have been crazy and incoherent for years. And we know that he is too tired and sleepy to stay awake through his own criminal trial. It's not President Biden who's not sharp. It's, in fact, Donald Trump. Now, let's look at public reporting. I'm only going to talk about public reporting. His criminal trial started on April 15th. And here's a summary of the press reports. On his first day of his trial, Reuters reported that Trump appeared to doze off during jury selection. On April 16th, it was reported that Trump dropped his head inside the courtroom, keeping his eyes closed before jolt jolting his head upright. On April 19th, the New York Times reported Trump's eyes remained, cl quote, closed for extended periods during the final day of jury selection. On April 22nd, MSNBC reported that Trump's lawyers were fighting to keep him awake. On April 30th, NBC and the New York Times reported that Trump not nodded off for significant portions of witness testimony and, as we all know, basically kept his eyes closed for hours and hours on end. On May 9th, Trump's eyes remained closed for many minutes, and Trump later, of course, dozed on and off. And the reports go on and on. May 13th, Trump was, quote, asleep during the afternoon session. On May 14th, a political reporter said Trump slouched in his seat and closed his, out, he closed his eyes and his mouth. Now, here we have a, a photo of Donald Trump, of course, through, through some of his trial. And I bring this up because it's Donald Trump that's asleep and that's hurting and dividing our country. And this attack on, on President Biden and his mental acuteness or his, his, his ability or his age is completely just a reason and an excuse for the Republicans to continue to attack President Biden. We all know that Donald Trump is the one that's unfit to be president. And that's why the majority is so desperate to be here today because they want to help him get elected and hurt President Biden. Well, it's not going to work. And with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back.